Okay. Share. Here we go. Okay. Right. Um, this is, uh, I don't know how many Lunch and Learn, so I should count them really. Um, this is Lunch and Learn. Um, from uh, number five, uh, by all accounts. Um, really pleased um, that today we've got um, Sarah Aldridge from TL Dallas. Uh, they're an independent insurance broking firm. I wanted to make sure we had somebody independent like all of the other um, groups we've had on here rather than one of the big firms, um, just to sort of give a view of the industry that they're in so that they can have a, have a, a more of a, an objective view of things rather than um, this is our product and this is what we want to sell you. Um, and as you know, the CICM, the best practice network, we don't, we don't like people selling to us. So, uh, so this is about just trying to give us a background as to what we do um, and, and help us sort of find our way through this minefield. Um, so um, without um, further ado, we, we ask questions as you go through as always um, um, and, and to keep on mute as, uh, if you can. Um, there's, a, there's a chat bar as well in here. So you can, you can raise a chat if you want to ask a question at any time. Okay, um, Sarah, I'll, uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I've just been asked to put a couple of slides together, um, just really talking about the credit insurance market as things stand at the moment. Um, as you can imagine, everything's very fluid. Um, changes um, with the credit insurers seem to be happening every couple of days, um, and that's not even an, an exaggeration. Um, so it's how really we're responding um, to the crisis and the impact that that's having on our clients, the credit insured clients, policyholders. Uh, I've also been asked as part of this just to provide a couple of tips in terms of things that we're, we're advising our customers to do um, to make sure they're getting the best value out of the policy and just to make sure that they're managing things um, properly, which is what, obviously what we're titling up, hashtag the new norm. So I've decided to split these into um, a couple of key areas um, just to keep it streamlined, um, just to focus on the main areas that we're going to be dealing with. So obviously that's me, hi everyone. Okay, so the next slide, and in fact the next couple of slides if we... Um, um, we'll go through them quickly. Um, just a bit about TL Dallas. Um, we are independent, which is really important for the purpose of this. We deal with all the insurers. Um, we love and hate them all equally at times. Uh, and we, we obviously use um, different insurers for different clients. Um, our client base is varied, um, different size businesses, um, different sectors, um, different countries as well. Um, TL Dallas recently celebrated a 100-year anniversary, so um, I think that's... Um, fairly um, a good thing to say about a company, um, good independent and um, long established business. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and again, that's just a slide just to show that we do credit insurance, but there's obviously um, other classes of insurance um, dealt with by TLD. Okay, so it's difficult because obviously we've all got different experiences of credit insurance. So I didn't want to do um, a slide even on um, teaching you about credit insurance. Um, but ultimately, um, what do we know about credit insurance? Well, um, what we know about credit insurance um, is that credit risk is exchange uh, is exchange for um, something that we call a premium, um, where clients obviously invest money in having a policy to protect the debtor's ledger. Um, I'm just trying to zoom in my slides as well. I'm um, sorry. Um, the, the credit insurance market is, is not massive um, in comparison to general insurance. There's probably 10 to 12 insurers um, that make up the bulk of the market share. Um, there are many, many smaller syndicates, and I wanted to make that point. Um, so there are some specially smaller insurers within the Lloyds um, market. How we try and sell credit insurance and what we say about credit insurance is um, that you're protecting your cash flow as a business. And us as credit managers, I guess we all know that, um, you know, we, we deal with customers, we set credit limits, and obviously we, we chase cash as best we can. But in the event of a bad debt, um, the credit insurers um, come into their own by replacing cash flow, um, which is critical for businesses um, in the event of a bad debt. Um, what we try and say is that it should give you confidence by having a policy to trade with high-risk customers by having credit limits covered, um, i.e. by an insured credit limit, which is where we're going to um, talk about the value and the risks of credit insurers at the moment. So uh, a key point here, um, with all insurance, um, there are terms and conditions that apply um, just like my house insurance if I leave my window up and I'm not going to be covered. Um, so it's really important that as a client, a, a credit insured client, um, you're aware of the terms and conditions uh, and that they are observed. 
um, to make sure you're compliant. I'm going to come back to this point because it's a really important why this is key right now um, when things are changing, because one of the key changes are to the terms and conditions regarding reporting. Is that all right so far? Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> Just check in. I'll talk yeah, quick, I know. Okay, so um, the picture at the top is supposed to be a bomb, um, obviously, uh, and, and not a real bomb, it's just a shock. So uh, uh, we're currently experiencing, um, obviously I don't need to tell you, you only need to watch the news, um, that we're, we're, we're struggling um, with, uh, with the economy at the moment, the unpredictable nature of what's going on out there. It's having a knock-on effect on how we do business in credit insurance, and again, for everybody that's dealing in credit, because the risk climate's changed significantly. Um, there's lots of firms that are impacted in different ways um, in terms of consumer confidence and employment. Everything's not fully known. One thing that we can say is that we're in unprecedented waters. And I think that that's a term that CICM are using themselves. Um, just a couple of key stats again. Um, they've been banded around um, by lots of people. Corporate insolvencies increased in March 2020 by 50%. Um, without a doubt, that's going to result in credit insurance claims being, um, you know, being received in an, an increased volume also. Um, claims for quarter three, 2019, again, we're, we're very late with these stats, uh, but these were at an all-time high, um, and that's taken directly from the ABI, um, the association. So is, is that prior then to where, where we are today? Yeah. This is before yeah. all of this crap happened? Yeah, before we've even right. got to COVID, we're in a... Right. We're in a situation where um, we're receiving and seeing lots of collections, lots of claims, um, without a doubt. I mean, I literally just, um, my inbox has never been so busy. Um, I've got claims from clients that I've not even seen, uh, that I'm not even aware that there were a problem. So um, the claims are coming in thick and fast. Um, so I can't wait to see the next set of stats um, and the set after that be very interesting. Um, Chamber of Commerce um, have cited recently that they think that there's 62% of firms that are going to be able to manage for three months. And there's also 20% of firms that may not even survive one month. Um, so these are quite scary figures. Um, I'm not really a pessimistic kind of person, as you probably all know. I think that sometimes we need to fight the good fight. Um, and we've obviously got to get stuck in and, and do what we can. Um, thing, positive things that I can tell you is that credit insurers learned lessons back in 2008. So anybody, I mean, I've been around quite a while. Um, there might be obviously people that have not been in credit since 2008. But if you remember, it was horrendous. Um, credit crisis. Um, we, we, we struggled in credit insurance. Um, mistakes were made. Um, insurers pulled credit limits left, right and centre. Um, and that's definitely not going to happen this time. Um, we are seeing credit limits being reduced and reviewed, which I'll talk about shortly. Um, but clients suffered as a, as a massive consequence of the panic um, that that created. Just a couple of really hot off the press things for you. Um, COFAS have advised, um, that's one of our key insurers, um, they advise that they're expecting to see a recession in 68 countries at the same time in the next month or so. There's usually roughly 11 at any one time. So I think that in itself is quite um, significant. Uh, the latest shock... Um, Positives, I think as a consequence of Solvency 2, um, our insurers are better capitalised um, to be able to deal with um, this shock. So I think we've got a little bit, we've got a little bit more comfort there. Um, only this week, Euler have downgraded 18 countries, and that's, that's in the last week. So what that means is it's more difficult to get credit limits in those countries, regardless of buy quality. So it's great, it's interesting. Okay, so I've got a slide um, regarding credit limits. Um, credit limits, for me, um, the value of a policy, um, we can have a policy that's 50 grand, 20 grand, you know, regardless of premium spend, um, the value of a policy sits with the credit limits and the appetite of the insurer to write good credit limits that take um, partial commercial um, attitude as well. Um, by trusting the client, obviously their knowledge of the customer, because you always know your client better than the insurer. Um, we, without a doubt, um, credit limits need to be um, reviewed regularly and the insurers are going through a process of review. Unlike 2008 and 2009, I can honestly say um, the action taken is not the same. Uh, we have no mass um, wholesale reductions of cover with the exception of one insurer. Um, QBE decided to take 25% off every credit limit for every client 
um, on the basis that they felt that there was a reduced demand situation in every uh, for every client. Of course, that isn't the case um, because some clients will be still trading, obviously, maybe even increased levels depending on their sector um, at the moment. So we can talk about specifics in a, in a short time. So do you think that, for example, that, that's an interesting one. Okay, so QG be the only one that have made any sort of significant reductions. So do you think that reputationally that's going to going to damage them? I think the what industry? they've... I think how they've positioned it, my opinion of, of this is, um, I think it was a bit uh, short-sighted um, because as I said, you know, um, we're still eating. Um, I've got a client that's a biscuit client. Um, me personally, I'm keeping that client and the biscuit industry are going. I'm eating more biscuits than ever. Um, so they're certainly not going to suffer for just as a joke, uh, but they're certainly not going to suffer, um, you know, especially in the medium term here. Um, I think to do that across the board was, that it was a bad mistake. But yeah. what they have positioned it in, in so far as is to say it's temporary. So this is just on a couple of month basis to try and cut out uh, capacity. I understand from the insurer's point of view why it's being done. What I will say, um, because they are a fairly good insurer, um, we've got good relationships with them, um, that they that they will take appeals. So, uh, you know, taking out 25% cover on um, Travis Perkins just recently, my client obviously couldn't manage with that, sh you know, that reduction in credit limit. So mm -hmm. we had to go through a process of appeal and, you know, provide evidence that it was needed uh, and we were able to get that cover back. So there is right. some sens sensible conversations being held. I guess, um, Sarah, isn't it? I guess QBE I have done it because they took some massive losses uh, last year and this year with... You know, some of the retail companies that went under and oh, yeah. Carillion and all that kind of thing. So they're probably more nervous than most because they took some massive hits. Yeah, it's interesting to see the different. I mean, I, obviously, I'm not going to focus on one or you know, one, one insurer because because they've all taken action. But with the exception of QB, they they took that across the board action. I'm not sure um, it's been badly received, if I'm honest, because they are open to conversations. But they needed to satisfy their reinsurers. Um, that whilst you know that the economic activity was you know not looking particularly good that they've done something to recoup some of that um, if there's no credit limit there's no claim as we, we all know um, so the value in the policy like I said before it is the credit limit so as, as brokers um, I spend a lot of time um, pushing credit limits because if you lay back and sit back and think oh well that's the decision that's being given then you're not going to get the most out of your policy but yeah QB have taken the action other insurers have done something different Nick um, other insurers have said um, is it a company that's likely to be trading so for, for example a trade is um, sent some reviews um, across um, one of my clients makes machinery one of their key customers was Greg's so the conversation that I had to have with Atreides, and you'll have to excuse my sense of humour, is they're not supplying the sausage meat for the sausage rolls, which clearly the shops are not open and selling. And they're actually making a big piece of equipment, um, you know, some capex. So um, once you have that conversation, then hopefully um, the credit limits have been maintained. Hopefully that's, uh, you know, it's a sensible view. Hello, uh, Jacqueline Hitchin here from Hello. Wex. Um, we trade um, in the UK and throughout Europe. Um, we have a super policy. We got a discount this year because we haven't made any claims. Mm -hmm. um, we have immediately, oh, we, we went into COVID, we went into credit uh, limit reductions and, and all we've done all the right things. Uh, we are still continuing to trade and we've had some really good business opportunities in the last couple of weeks that the teams have been working on for some time. Mm. Every single limit that we have applied for with our current insurer, who is one of the, one of the biggies, has been refused. Okay, and, so you are, yeah, sorry, yeah. you're obviously with Eula. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, um, and And the reason, COVID situation. That is right. the reason we're yeah, being given. I've, I've just seen that on a couple of Atreides um, decisions, to be honest. So, um, different insurers. Wonder why you thought of Euler through the. Yeah, sorry about that, but that's um, we we all we're seeing with Euler at the moment. That's where we're seeing the um, you know the don't apply for the credit limit, Sarah, because you're not going to get it. I'm on you on the Euler side though, because uh, we actually used to insure with them. We don't for the last two years. We we have switched to a different insurer, so we're much happier in Good. terms of yeah. the risk okay. approach. Different insurers work better for different clients and different industries. And, and obviously, what industry, without... Jacqueline, what industry are you in? Tell, let, let everybody know. 
Um, we're in fuel. Oh, so right, you're, you're fuel yeah. cars, aren't you? So, but, but again, um, Hawley is, you know, uh, with food and emergency mm -hmm. services. So the world is still going. Yeah, of course. Um, and, then, and to be honest, Chris, we, we've really cut down on our vetting. So we've actually put what we call an eligible criteria in. So we aren't getting the 150 apps a day. We're at two or three a day. Very, very select. So when we have gone for these limits, it's business that we need. Um, yeah. And I personally don't think I'm being supported. Right. Need a good okay. broker, Jacqueline. Need a good yeah. broker. Yeah, I was yeah, just going to say. Yeah, a good broker um, might be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, at the, the time, at the time now, um, there's different. Uh, we we all work differently. We've all got different relationships, and and, and that's fine. And um, there's never been. Um, if I can take it, if you can take any anything away from me today, it's really just a case of get the value out of your policy because as a proper Yorkshire person, it's all about the FM, which is value for money for us. Um, and f you know, clients that are investing um, thousands of pounds in. Credit insurance um, you know you need to get the most out of it so it's about appealing it's about providing um, the information who's the end customer because like you've just properly um, quite rightly said if you're dealing with food um, and obviously you're supplying fuel into food um, it's it's essential supplies and therefore those are those are getting um, looked at differently so um, those need to be escalated and, and um, I hope that you get some joy with that so this is Nick. Um, I love. So before the COVID nineteen, I, mm. I have a policy in our German uh, German offices, mm. and I'm not very happy with the term. So I was going to look to go to market, um, mm. but the way things transpired, we didn't get get to do that before COVID nineteen. Yeah. I'm probably thinking it's probably not a good time to go to market and change insurer. Just try and renegotiate better terms. Do you say yes or no? I'd say it depends on how unhappy you are with the product that you've got because, um, you know, for some clients, if you're happy and it's just a price, you know, it's just a price um, exercise that you're trying to do, then for me, the longevity of a relationship is going to pay its own dividends just in case you come to having claims and things and you need the support yeah. at that end. Unfortunately, you... it's, it's the whole policy. It's, they've had it for since 2005. Unfortunately, the the broker in Germany is very small. They've just had a standard tacit renewal. Mm. So it's renewed year after year. But when you look at it, it's a really, really, really poor policy for a very, very high premium. So I'd be well, looking to change yeah. everything from premium to discretionary limit to everything. So, and even looking to change the broker because I just don't think the broker's yeah. done it. It, if you've if you've got somebody that's working for you and they've let you down then there's regardless of covid19 you know the world as we've just said it's we're still working the world's still turning we're all still breathing and therefore you still need to make sure you're getting a good service so don't just accept what you've got um i just um you know there's there's situations where i've gone to market recently um you know in hindsight it probably was a waste of my own time um but it was worth checking just sense checking that as well um, there's other there's other situations that I've been surprised where I've come back and there's three or four insurers still wanting to compete. So you know it's it's some insurers won't want to um, in certain sectors look at look at doing anything um, just for the time being. They might just be holding steady, um, but things are changing all the time. Okay, thank you. That's worth knowing. Thank you. Okay, okay mm -hmm. move, move on, Sarah. Yeah, I just want to just say something. Um, I know that you're recording this, um, and obviously this is this is. Um, not 100% confirmed, but one of my colleagues um, who may be on the call, I'm not sure if she was joining, um, he just happened to mention to me that um, the, there are talks with the government and the private credit insurance market, and I believe some kind of agreement's been reached that the government's backing off some of the credit insurance, which should help clients maintaining cover. Um, we'll probably have a better update on that next week. Um, but this is, all, this is all positive. This is positive news. So for clients, Whilst you are going to see reductions and much, much more reviews, um, you know, just remember, um, give the information to the insurer. Um, the insurers are making assumptions in, in some instances, i.e. that the customer is likely not to be trading due to COVID-19 and therefore a reduced credit limit is being given. Um, assumptions obviously lead to, um, you know, wrong conclusions. So we just need to make, you know, make every effort to appeal, appeal, appeal. Okay. Okay, so this is the biggest change for me, um, as well as credit limits that we are obviously going to have to fight and appeal and, and challenge all the time, um, and we must keep doing that. Um, but it's essential to remember that one of the key terms and conditions of a policy is reporting. 
Um, this has got um, um, a double a double layer to it, I think. Um, so the insurers um, are recognised um, straight away that there are inevitably going to be payment delays. Now, from my point of view is, um, you know, with my credit manager hat on and obviously credit insurance um, broken hat on, we're going to see reasons and we're going to see excuses. And I've already seen, um, you know, some, uh, and again, you know, this is just my opinion. You know, some, sometimes I think, is this just an excuse to avoid paying on time? Um, you, know, are you, you know, are you actually adversely affected by what's going on? Um, but what the insurers are saying is overall, they're expecting to see more late payments because obviously um, the, the, the mandate was given to close non-essential businesses down. So we've tried to be, well, we, the insurance market has tried to be realistic and modified overall um, reporting. Now, I'm not going to be able to go through each insurer separately, um, but this is just a broad brush um, reflection on what's happened. So again, always go back to your own policy just to check what those changes are. Just worthy of note right now, um, you have an extension period usually on your policy. So you've got a due date and then you've got an extra period of time which you can continue to trade on an insured basis, subject to either an, an adverse event or that on-stop date being reached. You're supposed to put the account on stop and then obviously there's a further period of time and it needs to be reported. So if you're familiar with credit insurance, this is a key part of, of the policy, it's reporting. One of the major reasons that um, a claim's turned down is, is late reporting. So what the insurers are saying now is um, we actually recognise that, you know, maybe it's 14 days with one insurer to report an overdue from the MEP expiring, the extension period, exp you know, expiring. Um, they're now changing and overall um, that's, you know, it's been moved to 60 days by many. So you've got your terms of payment plus your on-stop period, which is usually another 30 to 60 days plus another 60 days. And the reason behind that is because uh, uh, this, you know, re respecting that this is going to happen to give the clients the opportunity to negotiate, um, you know, longer payment terms, um, but also just to stop the insurers being inundated with, you know, late payments. So I think that that's worth mentioning. Uh, really, really important on reporting. Um, putting the account on stop and taking action hasn't changed. So whilst the days to report have changed, the number of days to report into the insurer, you still have to take action um, and you still have to put the account on stop. So it's not, um, you know, it's not an opportunity for you to just continue trading with a customer that's not paid you for three months. Um, you know, it, you know, we must still comply with the policy. It's just the days to report that have been changed. Um, Again, it just gives you a bit more autonomy to make repayment plans, um, you know, without, you know, bothering the insurer or, you know, needing their permission. I've asked all my clients still to talk to me about the customers um, just so that I can get a grasp on what's going on with each client. And my favourite subject claims. Um, whilst some people buy a policy, um, you know, it's a tool for growth. You know, I try to be positive when I sell credit insurance and say, look, it's not just about your bad debt protection and obviously, you know, covering off, um, you know, you know, risk in terms of it going bad. It's an opportunity to grow a business and obviously to do business with customers that otherwise you might not have felt comfortable to do so. Um, but without a shadow of a doubt, we are seeing more claims. So claims are expected to increase 20 to 25 percent. They are still, as of today, being processed fairly quickly. While some insurers might have turned a claim claim round in, you know, 24 hours for a fairly small, straightforward claim, you know, I think it's fair to, to expect a slight delay. Um, but the delay is not, you know, unexcusable. We're talking about a couple of days to get claims settled. Um, there's been lots of high street names failed. Um, you, like, uh, you know, like we're all familiar with some of these names, um, Debenhams. Um, there's going to be many more to add to the list on the slide. Um, unfortunately, um, I think there's some that we can see coming as well. The only top tip I can give you on claims, um, as a broker, uh, we process our claims and we do a sense check of the claim before we, we submit it to an insurer, just to make sure that it's not going to sit in a pile and be held up um, and there turn out to be a problem with it. So try and complete the claim properly and um, with the, all the information, a statement of account, the insolvency notice, package it all neatly in a, in a lovely presentation so that when the claims person receives that, um, it's so easy for them to process um, that they obviously want to look at it and, and, and deal with it rather than a big messy one. And I think I've said most of that. Um, it's not like me to repeat myself. Um, but 
you need to be working hard, appeal your credit limits. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, negotiate the cover you need. Um, it might be that you've got a credit limit issue and remember that some, you know, some of you or some, some customers, um, you know, if, you, if you're advising, um, their funding is linked to credit insurance, credit limits, and therefore there's a double whammy here. So clients that can't get credit limits might also struggle to get funding. Um, so that's, it has never been a time that we need to work harder. Um, negotiate, what's the information? What's so special about you having that credit limit? You know, is it that you only need it for two months, three months? Is it a temporary thing? Um, try every, exhaust every avenue or make sure that your broker's doing that for you. Be prepared to ask for more accounts. I think we're all, we've all got really good at that um, in the last 10 years. Um, you know, there's no reluctance by credit managers to approach, you know, their clients and say, you know, can we have some more accounts? Um, so keep doing that. And again, um, provide for the paperwork in a beautiful format because it, you know, it's, it's much nicer to process a claim that looks presentable. And that, I think, finishes off my presentation. Okay. Thanks very much indeed, Sarah. Um, that was uh, that was that was interesting and exactly the sort of thing that we we were looking for to give some views. Um, has anybody got any any questions for Sarah? I'll um, I'll uh, just um, uh, stop sharing for a moment. Yes, so we can yes ask any questions. Hello. Hello. Um, have the so you talk about claims and there's a slight delay, which is understandable. So. Do you know if the insurance companies have furlong staff and therefore you know there's less people there or they're working from home or you know so in other words have they changed their processes so, so things will be take longer as far as i know nick um there's very few um insure any bro some of my, my friends are obviously brokers um there's i think one one broker i know um decided to ask some of the staff whether they wanted to be furloughed or not um a couple of that a couple of them said yeah um we've not um most of the insurers haven't i mean th this is a weird thing because whilst things are going um obviously um a little bit crazy out there um we're, we're busy than ever so it, you know we like my my easy friday has turned into um, a nightmare you know it's <laughs> it's literally we're our backs against the wall so i can't imagine i can't imagine that was that been a result of um the slowdown if you've seen any Okay, well, thank so you. We, we've got some other quick um, questions there. What what shape do you see um, the next twelve months to be with regards to claims and companies going out of business? Messy, <laughs> messy, um, messy. Um, I think I think that there will be a, a shake up. Um, this is quite it's quite upsetting to see um, because sometimes the companies that are going to struggle might be our own clients uh, as we're all in that same situation. Um, there's going to be more claims without a doubt. Premiums are going up already. Right. Okay, so premium premiums are going up. And um, one of the things that um, um, when we looking at what organisations have got to do in the planning going forward, um, obviously, if you have credit insurance, you've got to make sure, as you said, that you've got that you're still following up, that you're still doing all the right things, that you've still got good governance in place to accept yes. new customers, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. All of that stuff is not going to go away. And it's around picking the, the processes that are really important to you and, and focusing on them to make sure that you've got these sorts of things in place. Um, one of the things that we've seen, I think you mentioned it uh, just a second ago, Sarah, was organisations have made some pretty dumb decisions in terms of furloughing. They're furloughed whole functions, which has meant that they've not been able to do things. One organisation, as we heard um, at the beginning of these sessions, was um, had furloughed all their salespeople. Now their, their, their revenue has dried up. Now they need to address debt and disputes, but of course they've got nobody to talk to about how they're going to resolve the disputes. Um, another organization has um, furloughed all their accounts team and they can't actually produce um, cash target, cash, uh, cash forecasts. So there's been some real, um, really interestingly and dumb decisions made and organizations have jumped too quick. But one of the things, as, as you rightly said, you've got to maintain that degree of governance if you've got credit insurance. Otherwise, what, what you've got will not be will not be satisfied. And we've seen what Sarah said, some organisations acting the way that they're acting. Um, tourism and travel are going to take a huge hit from the pandemic. Hospitality is de generally in, in deep crisis. Yeah, that's, um, that's something we, we, we mentioned that as part of the uh, credit managers playbook, you know, thinking about organisations that operate in high areas of tourism, like, for example, in Cornwall, um, yeah. there's going to be, um, they're going to struggle down there, that's for sure. Um, and also what actions can you take coming out of this? It may be that certain organisations and certain industries will be released 
from um, from the lockdown early, and obviously you need plans in place to adapt to those releases. So, where if you're dealing with schools and colleges, for example, then you may want, and schools and colleges suddenly go back, then there's the opportunity to start doing something in schools and colleges. If they don't, then it might be another industry that goes back first. So again, yeah. it's, it's about trying to keep on top of what's going. Plans are, pl planning is great, but plans are generally useless because they will change. Has yeah, anybody yeah. Um, got any other sort of questions and comments they want to ask for Sarah while she's on? Just diving quickly, Chris, if I may, I heard this morning that, um, confidentially because I don't want to get arrested next time I go through Dubai airport but Emirates has just laid off and fired loads of people um, and, oh the airline yeah and if you can imagine what happened to the oil price a couple of weeks ago oil yeah. tourism Dubai that's it for them yeah. um, so that the knock-on to where their money goes into the rest of the Middle East is going to be uh, is going to be horrendous yeah, and we've got um, uh, Michael Ryan from, uh, not Michael Ryan, uh, the guy from Ryanair, what's his name? Yeah, we're on this morning. Yeah, yeah he was on yeah. this morning. Um, and, and, and BA yesterday uh, talking about not, not, uh, not, reopening, um, not reopening the, the, Gatwick, the yeah. Gatwick Airport. Um, yeah, and uh, the, 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 the implications are clearly not really and completely sort of thought through. Stuff's happening every day. That I, think, I think people like, like British Airways have taken COVID-19 to kind of reassess. And it's not all around COVID-19. I think it's just an option. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's true, Nick. There was a very interesting article that came up um, um, as, as this thing started. Um, and it was, again, it was the airline industry, EasyJet. EasyJet um, decided they were going to furlough all of their staff, and then they placed a three billion dollar order with, um, with 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 Airbus Industries. Yeah. So, Chris, are we uh, still sorry to ask? Are we still recording this bit, or is this? Is, uh, it's still, it's still, still recording. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay. that, that was an article. That was an article. Scaffold, you say, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, I'll that, take that. that, 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 article, that was an article that was on um, on 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 Daily Mail and social media. Um, so, so, so and, and there was some concerns about that. So, it's quite a lot. Of these sorts of things going on at the moment um i think that's it in terms of what we've got ah oh, david um oh david thornley thanks sarah i have to leave the meeting before um i get thrown out of the building all oh, right bye okay. david so he's obviously gone he's obviously uh he's yeah, in the pub. On, david thanks very much you've got thrown out of the building eh he's in the pub oh. <laughs> in the pub no, yeah. well, uh, uh, he's just realized actually, the pub's empty <laughs> uh, that's actually something that happens to us as well we have limited access to our office building if we need to go back yes. to get files and stuff like that but we have a, a set time and then by that time you have to be out to build yeah, it. I just know, know, Matt all says the same thing but he's a high <laughs> wife <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, just been popping into the but, um, so, uh, so, so sorry um uh, to 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 comment on what i was saying actually we can see it on our side our creating sure definitely make us work a lot harder for credit limits requests these days uh, yeah. Thankfully, we were lucky enough to do like a two-year deal last year when we renewed. So our premiums are not likely to change next year. Mm. Uh, so that's the plus. But uh, that definitely make it a little more, more difficult for us to negotiate new credit limits and new requests. Yeah. Okay, we've got. Um, so um, I think that's probably it um, for now. We've got seeing people dropping off now, which is uh, which is good. Um, we've got uh, next week, um, Thursday 11s, is we've got BSO. That's the um, Shared Service Centre um, for um, uh, the National Health Service Northern Ireland coming in to talk about what they're doing. We've got um, we've got organized, we've got a corporate recovery company coming in as well to talk about what they're going to be looking for in corporate recoveries. Um, we've got somebody coming on who's a um, shared service centre um, guru and, um, and an author, so they're coming on to talk about. Um, when, the, when's that the, one, the Chris? Of it. Sorry. When's that one? Uh, that the, the the all of the um, all of the uh, these will be sort of in timetables and stuff coming out shortly. Now. Okay. 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 So you're on the list, so you'll get um, bombarded with emails like everybody else does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and then if anybody doesn't like the emails or is fed up with them, just just let me know and I'll, I'll take them off the list. But of course, then you can get access to these sessions. Um, so if anybody's got any comments, questions, or feedback, please uh, drop it to CICMQ at CICM dot com cicmq at cicm.com um, uh, for any of these sessions if you've got any ideas that you would like um, shared or additional sessions and um, then please let us know